What's up guys, welcome back to Inside Out Precision. Uh, you may notice I'm holding a Hoyt. <laughs> um, today we're gonna be reviewing the RX-7 Ultra. Um, Hoyt has a whole new lineup this year. We just got them in yesterday. Um, I was trying to get this review to actually launch today, um, but I pulled the SD card out of my camera without turning off the camera and it kind of corrupted the file at the end and it was like 11.30 at night when I realized it. So I'm a day later than I wanted to be, um, but get you the info you wanna know about this. So uh, this is the new RX-7 Ultra. Um, like all their Ultras, it comes in at 34 inches axle to axle, has an IBO speed rating of 334 with a seven inch brace height. So pretty good speed for a seven inch brace height. Um, it weighs, they definitely lightened it up from last year. Um, you know, it's got a little bit different riser configuration, which I really like, we'll, we'll touch on that in a minute. Um, but you can get this bow and it'll go from a peak weight of 40 and you can get all the way up to 80 pound limbs on it. So pretty standard. Um, this will go from 26 all the way out to 32 inches in draw length, depending on the module. So they just sent it with the shorter modules. Um, that will, the longest I can get it with the shorter mod is 30 inches and then it'll go down to 26. Um, I actually might go, excuse me, it goes down to 27, not 26. Um, and then you can change the let off between 80 and 85% just with this little piece on the module here. Um, so it still has the HBX cam, they call it the HBX Pro cam. Really, really similar to last year's cam system, but it is a little bit bigger. Um, the first thing I noticed shooting this was how much smoother and how much quieter it is than years past. Um, I would say this pretty much rivals the Matthews this year um, with how dead it is in the hand. Um, draws incredibly smooth, just like all their, their ultras in the past. You know, I've always really liked that about Hoyt's lineup. Their, their bows seem to draw really, really smooth. Um, and then the riser design is totally different. So if you're familiar with Hoyt's riser, I actually have, so this is an RX-5 from last year. You can see how much more streamlined the RX-7 is. It doesn't have that bridged like tubing up here. Um, it looks a little bit more, honestly, kind of like a little more like the PSE carbon bow, um, but definitely has a little more structural integrity to it, which I really like. Um, you know, we had a lot of issues with that Mach 1 from PSE last year. They're just, there's just not enough integrity to that riser. Um, this is still gonna be a very stiff riser. Um, it just feels really good, you know, in, in your hand. It's really well balanced. Um, they do, ha it has what they call the inline system from Hoyt. So kind of like Matthews has their whole integrated system, Hoyt's doing the same thing. Um, one thing that I like about what they're doing this year is they're actually just sending the bows with the Picatinny mount already set up on it. So last year, you know, when you bought the bow, it came with the hardware to put it on there, but it was honestly kind of a pain in the butt. And if you didn't know what you were doing, you could scratch up your bow pretty good. Um, this year it comes with the mount already there if you want to run the Picatinny. This actually is a black gold sight that's mounted directly to the front there. Um, it also has Hoyt's integrated rest on it. Um, so very similar to Matthews in the sense that, you know, if you run their new quiver system with this, everything's going to be tucked really, really tight to the bow, keeping, you know, keeping that balance really good. Um, I didn't think they could make a better grip, but they did. <laughs> um, this new grip from them is awesome. Really similar shape to last year, but it's got a little better texture to it. Um, it's kind of got like a, a little more rubbery feel to it um, instead of kind of that hard plastic. Just Hoyt's always had incredibly comfortable grips, in my opinion, um, and this here is, is no different there. Um, you know, it comes with still this, this forward mounted little stabilizer. The, the idea with this is that A, it keeps that center of gravity low, um, and then it also, you know, being at the bottom here, it's, it's like if you mounted a seven inch bar to the front out of your stabilizer hole. You know, lots of people are running it with both. Some people take this off and just run a normal, normal stabilizer. Some people run their stabilizer on the bottom. There's no right or wrong there. Um, you can really play around and just figure out what, what holds and shoots best for you. Um, so I mentioned the seven inch brace height. Uh, I really like a bow with somewhere between a, you know, a six and a half and a seven inch brace height. Um, definitely gives you a lot more forgiveness. Um, with that brace height, you get a little, le little less reflex in the riser, which if you're not, familiar with what reflex is. It's basically the distance from uh, the shelf here to like the end of the limb pocket. So some bows have a lot of reflex, um, usually shorter, well, always shorter brace heights with more reflex like that. And while it does pick you up some speed, um, it, also, it also gets a lot more torquey. So basically 
a bow with more reflex in it is gonna be more sensitive to grip pressure. So a bow with less reflex, such as this, or you know, like that new Matthews, or some of the PSEs, um, the same amount of grip pressure is not going to torque the bow as much. So you get a little more forgiveness out of it. That's really, when people talk about, you know, long brace heights being forgiving, it's not so much the brace height that makes it forgiving, it's because the geometry of the riser makes it more forgiving. Um, so I think they did a really good job with this bow. I think it's, you know, spec wise, this is like exactly what I like to shoot. Um, I have not run it through the chronograph yet. I'm expecting it to be pretty much right on par with like all their other bows, um, their ultras over the years. Um, so we are gonna run it through the chronograph. My chronograph's kind of been giving me some weird numbers lately, um, but I got it charged up. Hopefully everything is good. Um, if not, I'm going to find a better one and, <laughs> and, and use that um, for, for the speed test. But um, like I said, lots of cool stuff on this bow. Um, the, oh, one thing, the modules are not interchangeable. So we had a guy call and he's like, hey, you know, can I put the mods from my Ventum 33 onto the new RX-7? Um, they are not the same size. They will not fit. Like I said, this cam is very similar to last year's, but it is a little bit bigger and the mod spacing on it is a little bit different. So you can't, you can't interchange the modules. Um, and on top of that, back to the cam system, um, they still use the spacer kit here to tune. So kind of like Matthews has their top hats, Hoyt has two different sets of spacers, the gray ones and the black ones. And you wanna use those to take out your left and right tear. Um, I'm shocked when I hear people you know, call and say, oh yeah, I took it to my pro shop. They said not to move those spacers. I mean, Hoyt literally sends you a kit <laughs> called the tuning kit, the Hoyt spacer and tuning kit. So if you weren't supposed to use them, Hoyt wouldn't make that. So you are supposed to use those spacers to tune this bow. You can just leave your rest and center shot and just push that cam right or left till it comes into a bullet hole for you when you're paper tuning. So definitely a cool system. You know, it's quick, it's easy. Um, you do need to press for it, but it's not very time consuming, much easier than, you know, moving a bunch of little washers like on some other brands. So. Um, definitely a cool bow. I'm excited to see what it'll do through, uh, through the chronograph there. So I'm going to go get it set up. We're going to do the speed test. Like we always do 30 inches, 70 pounds, 28 inches, 70 pounds. I think I've got an arrow ranging from like 510 down to like 360 grains. Um, so we'll throw, throw some arrows through it and see what she can do. Okay. So you probably noticed this is a little different setting than where we just were. Um, last night I, I've been having issues with my camera batteries. Um, I barely made it through that first part of the review with the first battery. I put in the second battery to do the speed test and before I could even get started, I made it halfway through the first shot and the battery died. Um, I didn't have the charger with me because I assumed that since both batteries were charged, I, <laughs> I wouldn't need it. Um, I got a really busy day tomorrow. I'm going to California to visit some family. So what I did was I just shot all the arrows that I usually shoot and I wrote down the speeds. Um, so we, again, 30 inches, 70 pounds, 28 inches, 70 pounds. Um, before I get into the speeds, there are some other kind of technical things I wanna go over on this boat that I think are really, really awesome. Uh, the, the first being, I, th I think that riser design, um, is kind of a game changer. One thing that, that Hoyt has always done um, is they've had that that bridge, like tubed riser, and it's, it's always shot really well. It's always had you know minimal vibration, minimal sound for a carbon bow. For whatever reason with that new cam with the HPX Pro and that new riser design, it is seriously one of the smoother drawing and smoothest shooting bows they've ever made. Um, I, I need to talk to the engineers to see why that is, but it, it's impressive. It's, it's definitely, in my opinion, the best shooting ultra that they've ever made. And I assume that the RX-7, just the standard, will be the same way. We haven't got one of those in the shop yet, uh, but it, it's, it's pretty awesome. Um, the second thing is their whole inline system. So I know that's a theme this year. Everybody's trying to go with that integrated route where everything is you know close and tight to the bow. Uh, but they did a really good job with it. I think building the integrated Picatinny mount into the front of the bow and coming with the bracket that it already needs is 
is a big plus. If you're just a customer who buys a bow and you get handed the packet from last year, let's say, on like the RX-5s, um, you had to remove the sticker, you had to like take out like two or three different bolts, there was a little plate, it was, it was a whole thing to replace it. This year, if you can find a Picatinny mount, which that's, that's the hard part is finding one, um, but if you can find one, you can just mount it yourself right at home and it's very, very simple. So those are two big pluses. Now let's get into the speed test. Okay, so we have 30 inches, 70 pounds. I have a 511 grain arrow, a 480 grain arrow, a 440 grain arrow, and a 360 grain arrow. So the 511 grain arrow at 30 inches, 70 pounds. Sorry, I have a puppy. Uh, 30 inches, 70 pounds was 271. Uh, the 480 grain FMJ, was 283, which, I mean, that's for a 30 inch draw length, 70 pounds, 480 is like a very, very average weight, I would say, that, that you would reach by, by building an arrow. Uh, so 283 with that. Uh, the 440 grain arrow was 292. And then we jumped to the 360 grain arrow, which I was trying to find one in between. Uh, just didn't have one <laughs> built. Um, but the 360 grain arrow was 325. So only, only nine feet a second under IBO. And that's, you know, that's with a string loop and a peep sight and string dampeners and all that. So that bow is probably pretty close to IBO with the 350 grain arrow. So really good speed out of that. Uh, with a 28 inch draw, 70 pounds, 511 grain arrow was 261. Uh, 480 was 272, which not a huge jump, like 283 to 272, only 10 feet a second with two full inches of draw length difference is, that shows it's an efficient cam. Um, the 445 grain arrow was 281, so not a huge jump there. And then the 360 grain arrow was at 303. Uh, one thing I do wanna mention about this speed test was uh, I mentioned it earlier in the review that they only sent the bows with the shorter module on it. So this Ultra has the shorter module, which will go from 27 to 30 inches. So I'm at the top end of the shorter module. Uh, if it's anything like last year's bows, the, the, sh the longest setting on the shorter module will shoot faster than the shortest setting on the longest module, if that makes sense. Uh, last year, there was almost a 14%, 14 foot per second difference. Um, so the I was doing the Ventum 33, I think 29 was the longest on the short module, 29 and a half was the shortest on the long module. Uh, the 29 shot seven feet a second faster than the 29 and a half. But you have to also remember that we're, we're talking another half inch in draw length, which generally should be another six to eight feet a second. So really it's a 14 foot a second swing. I would assume that it would be the same on this. These modules do not overlap uh, as with like the RX-4 and uh, RX-3 and basically anything previous. Um, you know, it used to be that the mods would go from let's say 25 to 28 on the number two cam and then the number three cam would go 28 to 30. And the, the 28 on the number two cam would shoot faster than the 28 on the number three cam. Um, and these mods don't overlap. If you need a 29 and a half, or in this case, a 30 and a half, you have to just shoot the longer module. But we're talking a few feet a second, which is, you know, five feet a second is literally less than the blink of an eye. So I'm, I'm really impressed with this bow. Um, I used to shoot Hoyt for a lot of years. I, I've always loved their grips. I've always loved, I've always liked a lot of things about Hoyt. Um, I just, you know, for me personally, in the last few years, there's been some other bows that have kind of fit my bill better, but I think this is one of the best bows probably they've ever built uh, for a carbon bow. So definitely get down to your Hoyt dealer, pick one of these up, check them out. I think you're really gonna like it. I think it's gonna be a really, really popular bow out west. I think back east, the RX-7 is probably gonna get a little more love, um, but the Ultra out here, I think is gonna be our best seller. So head on down to the bow rack, our shop, or any Hoyt dealer in your area, uh, pick one up and let me know what you think. I 
like I said, I, I think it's probably one of the best bows they've ever built. So as usual guys, thank you for all the support. We really, really appreciate it. Head on over to insideoutprecision.com if you want some merch. Um, we got a lot of new hats on there. We got some new t-shirts and uh, yeah, they're kind of fun. You know, it's not just all branded stuff. It's yeah, just outdoor lifestyle stuff. So thanks again, guys. Remember precision is a decision. Keep them in the middle. I'll see you on the range.